Hey bears, I'm Mariah Razo, and this is your CTV Bear Breakdown. One of the more popular days of the school year is here. Market Day takes place Friday. Members of Youth Entrepreneurs bring popular fast food options here to sell during lunch. After doing research and setting prices, they are given money to buy what they need. They either purchase the food from a restaurant or make it themselves. Their goal, to turn a profit, they must pay back the amount loaned to them, but anything above that is divided among group members. They get to keep the profits from their sales, but they also learn how to price, they learn how to promote, they learn how to set up a place, and they learn the importance of knowing your market. In the future, I want to own my own business, so I'm already getting prepared how to price my items and how to target my um, target market. Recognition this week for the top students in the junior class. Those who rank in the top 50 after their first two years of high school receive the McCoy Award. Students receive medals at the ceremony Wednesday night. The McCoy Award is named after the first mayor of Independence and it originated back in 1902. A big week for the entire country. Tuesday marked election day. Once again, Christman served as a polling place for people who live in the area. Voters cast ballots for Congress as well as state and local races and issues. On the national stage, the Democratic Party took control of the House the Republican Party maintained control of the Senate. The GOP even picked up a seat in the Senate in Missouri as Attorney General Josh Hawley defeated incumbent Claire McCaskill. Students here at Christman cast their own ballots in that race, as well as seven other contests last week. It was part of a mock election. Student workers ran the polls. Anyone could vote as long as they showed their student ID. The 423 students who cast a ballot accurately predicted five of the eight items. They only missed on the Holly McCaskill race and two of the three medical marijuana related ballot initiatives. So of, of the group that voted, we only had 423 ballots out of about a 1400 school. That's pretty indicative of what's going on in the real world on midterm elections and things like that. If there's not a figurehead like the president, people don't get out to vote. So um, I thought that was kind of an intriguing thing for the kids to look at, that the turnout rate in our school, when the polling place was right here and you didn't have to like early register and all that nonsense, it was all literally right in the same building and the turnout was still the same. Um, our races were pretty close. Um, the initiatives and stuff like that, the kids got a chance to vote on. Um, so it was kind of a cool opportunity for the kids to care. And a lot of the kids were very excited. They even helped run it with Pam Stafford and I. Um, and that was probably my favorite part, that the kids were wa watching for voter fraud, that the kids were setting up the ballots, that the kids were checking people in. Early data released after Tuesday showed voting among those 18 to 29 years old was higher this year than the last midterm election. Christmas cheerleaders will compete at state. They finished third in their group at regionals last Saturday. That was good enough to qualify them for state where they will compete the first weekend in December. For the third straight year, Fort Osage bounced the Bears from football districts. The Indians routed Chrisman 45 to 14 last Friday. The loss left Chrisman winless this season on the road and five and six overall. Players say the season didn't go as expected, but they grew together as a team. This season was crazy. Uh, it was like a roller coaster ride, a bunch of up and downs. We had fought through a lot of adversity we still fought together as a team, so I like the way we participate as a family. The amount of talent we had, I feel like we probably could have done better, but we had to face a lot of adversity this year, so there's outside factors affecting our football team that I think may have caused us to lose some more games and lose focus. We had a lot of adversity throughout the season, and I think the coaches sat us down in the locker room, talked to us, and we overcame it as a team. I'm going to remember practice and how we would argue sometimes and that how we would just be friends again five minutes later in the locker room and I liked how we were close together as a team. Like I said we faced a lot of adversity this year and I think that helped us bond as a team and become more than just teammates and help us become brothers. Just the bond and how much fun it was just to play football. Um, you, it's different that you think it's over 
you just, but you still have that bond with everybody, so it's the best part. Looking ahead to next year, the Bears will lose 17 seniors off this year's team, most of whom played a lot. One of the standouts for the Bears verbally committed this week to play at the next level. Safety Kelvin Mason announced on Twitter he will attend and play for Missouri State University in Springfield. Mason made second team all state last year and all districts the past two years. He says it was a difficult decision, but one made easier by the fact that his older sister plays softball for the Bears. Any other schools I would have went to, I wouldn't have known anybody there and just her being there and me kind of following her footsteps kind of made it easier for me to make that decision. My uh, unofficial visit there, the coaches had a lot of energy and I, that's kind of something that I'm big on when it comes to football is energy. That's kind of how I get going. So I think that was a big, a big um, part of me making that decision. After I made that call to Coach Steck, uh, after I told him I was for sure coming there, it was just 100 pounds lifted off my shoulders. So. The earliest Mason can officially sign with Missouri State is December 19th. The end of football season means the winter sports now have their full rosters. The football players join the basketball and wrestling practices this week. For the wrestling team, that means the additions of state medalist David Toese and state qualifier Mason Walters. They, along with fellow state qualifier Cash Akabak, will be leaned on this year. They're going to be our hammers. They're going to be our leaders. Um, anything like that we can expect on. The boys' basketball team added several football players to the mix, many who played key roles on varsity last year. Coach Jacob Cates says that experience will be beneficial this year. The guys were put in a lot of different situations, whether they're down a lot, up a lot, really close games, um, a first season with a new coach. Um, and so all those experiences, and a lot of those were sophomores and juniors. We only really had one senior that played a lot. Um, those experiences that they were able to get are really going to help us this year as those are now juniors and seniors on the court for us. A similar situation for the girls team. Freshmen, sophomores, and juniors from last year are now sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Coach Scott Schaefer says the coaches have already seen positive growth in this year's bunch. We have uh, standards for certain drills, shooting, and what have you. And when they maybe are, are below the standard or early on in the drill, maybe things aren't going well for them, last year they would cave. They really would. And, and, and that, but that happened in games also uh, where we got behind, faced a little adversity. Maybe they would uh, not fight through it as, you know, at least all of them. It was kind of spotty. And uh, we're seeing it early on in practice where they collectively fight through those uh, adverse, adverse moments and, and that's a sign of maturity and, and it, it should bode well for when that happens in games situations so uh, that, that's encouraging. Aside from Jamborees, all the winter sports teams will have several practices before their first contest. Boys basketball is up first when they take on Van Horn in about a week and a half. Positive reviews for this year's fall musical. The theater department brought God's Spell to the Christman Auditorium stage last week with shows Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Actors from the show says they are pleased with how it turned out. Uh, I thought it went really good. It was, um, it was cool. It was uh, just really smooth and fluid. I think it went really well. There were a couple of bloopers, but you know, with a live show, you gotta expect some. Next up, the winter play auditions take place Tuesday for 13 past midnight. Performances of the murder mystery will run from January 31st through February 2nd next semester. This week, seniors are a little easier to pick out of the crowd. Many received their senior gear last week. Jostens delivered it all during lunch on Friday. The gear included sweatshirts and sweatpants, among other things. Speaking of seniors, a reminder to submit a college application for your chance to win a TV or Bluetooth speaker. Mr. Bounds will raffle off both of these things after November 30th. In addition to the college application, you must also create an FSA ID and be passing all of your classes in order to receive the chance to win. In case you missed it, Chrisman Cafe has a new home this year. 
In previous years, our functional skills students ran it out of the concession stand next to the choir room. This year, they wanted to get more students involved, so they needed more room. That's why the shop is now in room 235. This year, Ms. Harris says they offer more products as well as a punch card that serves as a sort of rewards card. You buy nine items and receive the 10th free. But the Crispin Cafe does more than just help students and teachers get their caffeine fix for the day. It's a really good program that helps our students in special education to get some job skills that'll help them get ready for life after high school. The cafe is open to students before school and between first and second hours. That's it for this week's Bear Breakdown. I'm Mariah Razo. We'll see you next time, Bears.